Bollinger's ultra-dispensationalism is one of the greatest disasters ever. So whatever his reason for doing that, it's a shocking disaster. Ultra-dispensationalism fundamentally says that only the late letters of Paul are the gospel. It doesn't get any worse than that. The gospel comes from Jesus, starting in the gospels. So that's completely wrong. But let's deal with the issue of tongues. First of all, we have to be very reasonable and calm and say, well, what does it mean? We go to define tongues to the beginning of Acts, where we find that the apostles spoke in foreign languages, unlearned supernaturally. That's quite clear. This was a miracle performed by the apostles, and the people from about 18 different countries heard their own languages being spoken. They said, this is a miracle. It was. It wasn't a miracle of hearing. No, no. It, Luke clearly says that the apostles began to speak in foreign languages, so that's what language speaking is. Please note, it was a foreign language recognized by the speakers of that language. It wasn't being done in a prayer closet, not there in Acts. It's being done publicly and it was verifiable. Now, is that going on today? You're going to have to verify it. Very unwise to say it can't happen. God can certainly do that miracle, but it's very unwise to accept without any sort of analysis that is genuine. So you simply say, all right, if you're one of those people who has that gift, if you claim that that's the gift you have, the gift of speaking in languages, if you're claiming that, show me. Paul is very clever. In 1 Corinthians 14, 13, he wants that gifted person in languages to come out of the closet so we can hear what God is saying. So here's the text. It doesn't get nearly as much press as it should. First Corinthians 14, 13 says, if you're one that speaks in languages, if you have that gift, pray that you can interpret it so we can all hear what God is saying. People don't do it. So it's a question of verification. It's a mistake to say that languages or tongues cannot happen. You want to say that. It's equally a mistake to accept the claim until it's verified. And verification comes when you know that a real language is being spoken supernaturally. So a humorous thing happened to me one day. I was speaking somewhere and I turned to the man on my right and I said, if you speak to me in German right now, I'll accept that as a miracle. Well, he spoke to me in fluent German. <laughs> He'd lived in Germany the year before. That was funny. That wasn't a miracle at all. Here's the test. Tell your language speaker, all right, I'm perfectly prepared to believe this is a miraculous gift of speaking in languages unlearned, but you're going to have to demonstrate. I'm not going to be so gullible as to accept this without proof. So show me that this is a real language. Have it interpreted either by yourself or someone else, both possibilities, and let's see what it is you're saying. But we'd never want to say, well, we know that God cannot do this or that miracle. That puts a limit on God. Paul actually didn't say exactly when the languages will cease. He knows that by the time we get to the second coming, it will be quite unnecessary to have that form of communication. He doesn't say that it would cease in AD 70. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say one way or the other. Good book on that. I could recommend another week if necessary. What is so important is to verify. Be a Berean. Check it out. Ask for some proof that what you're hearing, first of all, is translated in public, as Paul commands in 1 Corinthians 14, 13. Secondly, that somebody's verifying that this is real language. And one strange occasion in India, and one occasion that nobody's even remembered practically, is not going to prove it. You must show that the generality, the regular thing that claims to be the languages, you must show that that really is language. Then it has validity. Otherwise, I'd be careful. It says, what is the point of languages, Paul said? It's a sign to unbelievers. That's a miracle. Right. Tell me, how does that work if you never come out of the closet? That's not a sign to unbelievers. So you must match the phenomenon you hear with the text of Scripture. Otherwise, you get misled. So that's very important that you match that particular text. Oh, yeah. Not a sign to unbelievers, as it must be, if, in fact, it never comes out of a closet, which is the majority of all the tongue speaking that goes on. So first thing, tongues is languages. Uh, Clearly, in Acts there, these were recognizable foreign languages. That's the test, then, that we must apply.